Busy, busy winter transfer window for American players. There's quite a few categories, right? You've got your young players signing from MLS academies to Europe. You've got players moving within Europe. DeAndre Yedlin, I'm thinking Newcastle to Galatasaray. Some other moves from MLS to Europe. Uh, Herc, I sent you the picture of this list, and I asked you, you know, if there's one name on this or one transaction that jumps out to you, which one is it? You said Brian Reynolds, the young 19-year-old just signed from FC Dallas to Roma. Why? <laughs> Who is Brian Reynolds? And I say this with all due respect. We're talking about a 19-year-old player with less than a full season in top flight football. 27 games. That's what he played. He's 19 years old. He's got zero national team caps to his name. This changes everything. This transfer, when it's all said and done, about $15 million around that ballpark. This changes everything. All of a sudden, this means American players they're part of the global market. And not only are they part of the global market, but you're trying to tell me Roma and Juventus are fighting for a player that's not proven himself in top flight? I mean, did you ever hear about Brian Reynolds or his name being touted or being thrown around? In that organization, I could tell you over the years about maybe three or four different names that you've heard of. This is something now, it changes the panorama, it changes the landscape of what is U.S. soccer, what is Major League Soccer, and its ability to become a global player in the global market. Uh, to me, this is, I don't want to say uh, shocking, but, but it definitely is uh, I you know opening to me. I, I can't imagine that this won't be a trickle effect. You won't be seeing more players you know, take flight. Well, let's talk about some players whose names we do know. Jordan Morris, Paul Areola specifically. Established guys within MLS, within the U.S. national team, who are going on loan deals to the same club in Swansea. Uh, what does it say about the level of the player in MLS or maybe just the level of Major League Soccer that the league's best American players aren't getting first tier work. They have to go to the English second tier. Well, I, I think you're being a little sensationalist there. It's second tier uh, because Swansea's in the, in the Premier the League? Is Swansea in the Premier League? Well, you didn't let me finish. Okay. They're going to be on the cusp of getting promoted and that's why these players are going there. They see it as an investment. Now, I understand what you're, go what you're saying. Uh, no. Major League Soccer's best aren't jumping to Barcelona. They're not jumping to, you know, Dortmund. They're not jumping to Man United, to City, to these big clubs around the world. Hey, I they have. Tyler saying. Adams went to Leipzig. I get what you're saying. 13 years before that, Clint Dempsey uh, went to Fulham. That's fine. That's fine. That's fine. That's a handful of players. It's not the norm. You could say that. And that's fine. Not all the players that the U.S. exports are going to be world beaters. Not all the players that they send are going to these giant teams, these massive clubs. And that's okay. A Jordan Morris, a Paul Ariola, they still have somewhere in this U.S. men's national team ecosystem. They can still survive and thrive, whether it's Swansea, whether it's Tottenham, whether it's Leipzig, or whether it's Barcelona. What you need to do is you need to play in Europe. What you need to do is you need to play the highest uh, possible uh, place you can. You need to rub shoulders, you need to sharpen the irons with the world's best or a better level than what is Major League Soccer for your benefit and for what is the U.S. men's national team benefit. Now, what does it say that Major League Soccer wants to be a participant in this? That's a totally different other you know, story because I, re I recall the time when Don Garber would come into Major League Soccer uh, locker rooms and he'd have a chat with us, discussions with us about, about how much he hated when players left Major League Soccer and went to inferior football in his eyes, the Scandinavias, the second division, the second tier leagues. Well, this is happening now because they see that they want to be part of this global market. Uh, 26 years old for Jordan Morris. Maybe he didn't have those big clubs, those big leagues knocking on his door. But maybe he can get there via this second tier on this cusp of promotion. Same thing with Paul Ariola. I don't mind these deals. I mean, I think Jordan Morris's deal was rumored $7 million uh, when it's said and done with an option to buy. And if it happens, he's in the Premier League. He's played at a higher level. He shunned some Bundesliga teams, which I would have expected. Maybe that's a better league, better fit for him. But it makes sense that they'd want to test themselves on a different level. And honestly, I'm very surprised that Major League Soccer gave in to this. Mm. Well, let's be honest. Uh, there's a reason that those guys might want to leave. And right now, that's the threat of the Major League Soccer season not going forward as planned. The owners have threatened to lock out the players. We had a deadline last Thursday night. That was extended to this Thursday night. We'll be honest with the people who are watching us. We are recording this just after 4 p.m. Uh, Eastern time on Thursday. Herc. You've been through one of these before, but you also talk to a lot of guys yeah. still in the league. Right now, eight hours until that deadline, what does your gut tell you? Will the owners lock the players out, or will the players accept the deal on the table? 
You know, before I answer, it's been a very weird negotiation. I'm getting a very weird feeling, a distinct feeling than I did the last go around uh, before what was uh, MLS is back in that tournament. Uh, my gut tells me it will be extended again. We may see a situation like the NBA where it gets extended multiple times until they finally come to terms. Uh, but I am shocked that it's gotten to this point. I am shocked that the players openly, publicly, willingly say they want to play. That's what they want to do. And the owners are taking the backseat. The owners are pumping the brakes. Now, you have to put things in a context. Let's give it a quick timeline here. They negotiated a CBA, and then a few months later, the pandemic hits. We get it. Okay, the CBA wasn't ratified. The pandemic hit. It changes things. The players are the ones that said, okay, we get it. We will go back to the table with you. We will negotiate. They negotiated, and it got ugly. It got bad. But they negotiated. They finally did it. And... They put in a force majeure clause, and all of a sudden the owners are saying, guess what? We want to activate this force majeure clause because it's not that we're hurting so bad right now that we can't pay you guys, but we want to take advantage of the situation and make sure that we can get some money in the back end and maybe you know, put future generations uh, in a bad place for, for Major League Soccer players. Because that's the way it looks to me. That's the way it looks to these players. But not only that, we're going to add two years. Why would they want to add two years? Well... They want to take away this in this CBA and for the players their biggest bargaining chip, which is the 2026 World Cup. That year, if they have a chance to negotiate off of that year, the money that can be had for Major League Soccer players, which by the way they've already uh, given up close to 200 million or will give up close to 200 million uh, in, in in salaries and in what is uh, shared revenue, et cetera, et cetera, uh, after this uh, CBA is done, it takes away that bargaining chip they have and eliminates probably any chance they have of getting something in which in their eyes is fair and just. Uh, they're doing this because they can. The players feel that way. The players have been more than just in this. The players want to play. It's in Major League Soccer's court, per se, or side of the half right now. We'll see what they do. My gut says it gets done. It's on how much the players want to concede. Uh, will they concede those World Cup years? Will they concede that big bargaining chip? Uh, they want to play. They want to play. They don't want to leave future generations in a bad place. I think it'll get done, Seb. Well, thank you very much for watching ESPN on YouTube. For more sports highlights and analysis, be sure to download the ESPN app. And for live streaming, premium content, and let's not forget as well, ESPN FC, seven days a week. Subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.